Sit down so I don't cry. Sit, sit, sit. I, um, I saw a meme one time that said the hardest thing you can do as an adult is find actual friends. Even Jesus had a hard time with it. And um, your pastors will be my friends probably for the rest of my life. Yeah. So I honor them today. I honor your founding pastors. I honor your pastors. Everybody that served so diligently, I have never felt more loved. It feels like I'm at home. My beautiful brown husband is at home preaching it up. He's from Costa Rica. He's the only one in our family that loves the ocean. <laughs> I am Cuban. We've seen it enough. <laughs> For everybody who is not Hispanic in the room, it's going to feel a lot and very intense. I'm sorry. Pero para toda la gente que habla español, it's going to feel like your tia is throwing a chancleta at you for the next 30 minutes. 28, 47. Por Dios. Okay, my God. Here we go. We're just going to jump in. Okay. God is good. Let's pray. Jesus, I love you. There's none like you, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you for uh, today, Lord. Teach us how to have an eternity mindset, God, so we can love people better, so we can be more generous. God, so we can be more epic to the people that you are putting in front of us, Lord. Uh, It is you that we follow. It is you that we love. It is you, Father God, that we want to be led by. So we love you. This day is yours. We are thankful for it. Amen. Everyone says amen. Here we go. Let's jump right in because I want to just jump right in. And so what happened is I work in New York City. I live in Florida, but I work in New York City. And when I work in Chinatown and in Chinatown, there's a street. It's called Canal Street. Everything is fake on this street. And um, and they're always trying to like sell me a bag or, you know, sell me a pair of Yeezys that I'm never going to wear. And so it's like everything is fake. And so last night, Kaylee, who's with me, she's our youth pastor. We were talking about what it looks like to walk Canal Street. And she looks over at me and we were talking about the message today and, you know, I'm going to talk what it looks like to have an eternity mindset. And for me, eternity mindset means loving people well. You love people well when you have eternity in mind. And she said, when you don't love people like Jesus, it's like love on Canal Street. I said, I'm stealing that. I'm going to share it, but I'll give you credit. And it's true. It's stitched wrong. You can't really tell unless you've really, if you've really held a Louis bag. Do you know what I'm saying? Some of us have never really experienced love. So we are a loving people like love on Canal Street. And we don't do it the way Jesus did it because we've truly never held a Louis bag. Hey Tim, how you doing? I heard you said my name wrong. It's Chadi Orozco. You're doing great. Where's, where's Lizzie, by the way? Where's Lizzie who was leading worship? Hey, sweets, you worship like it took you a minute to get here, and it's tangible. Like the struggle bus that you were on that got you there, um, it didn't run you over and back up. And so I just want you to know that it blessed me today while you were worshiping. I looked at you, and I thought to myself, immediately I felt the Holy Spirit. This is not in my message. It just felt... Welcome to the party. So I felt like the Lord was like, like you had this moment and you still kept the moment. And it was like you didn't care if anybody else was in the room. And the story that I'm going to preach today, like if I could have embodied what that looked like, it was like I saw you and I saw the story. And so I'm going to jump right in. I'm going to be preaching out of uh, Luke. It's one of my favorite stories in the Bible. Lizzie, don't get weirded out about what I'm about to say, because you'll hear it in a minute. I promise. I'll bring it all around. But it's the woman with the issue of blood. (sighs) Oh, my God. They brought the sisterhood lady. She's going to talk about periods. Whatever. I'm not. Calm down. So... (laughs) We find Jesus, why do people laugh at me like I'm just like having a conversation? So 
We find Jesus has been dealing with some stuff. Homie is tired. He is legitimately tired. He had to deal with a naked demoniac a little while ago. His disciples are stupid. Like they're just making really dumb decisions. And what happens is he gets to this coast and there's a man named Jairus. And the man says, hey, my daughter is dying. Will you please come and heal my daughter? Jesus stops and says, absolutely, I will go and I will heal your daughter. And there's a crowd. Isn't it funny how when something good happens, people show up? But when you're riding the struggle bus, you're riding it alone. Just So Jesus, the crowd, I mean, they're pushing up against him. It's super intense. You can read the entire story in Luke 8, but I am just going to, I'm going to paraphrase through it. I promise I'm going to use the Bible. When Jesus and his disciples crossed the lake, another crowd was waiting to welcome him. There's always a crowd waiting. A man made his way through the crowd. This is Jairus. This is the story I just paraphrased. And so what they're doing is they're walking towards where Jairus' daughter is. She's sick. She's dying. They're headed there. Everybody has a purpose. Everybody has an agenda. I'm 43. In the crowd was a woman. She had suffered from an incurable menstrual disorder for 12 years. Husbands. You know how like the day before we get like where you know and you just start buying chocolates and bringing home Taco Bell? <laughs> My husband will be like, do you want Taco Bell? I'll be like, I'm fine. I'm not even mad right now. And he's just like, do you want to watch a reality TV show? What are we going to do? Okay, this woman for 12 years was like that, okay? (laughs) Oh, sweet baby lady. Okay, so 12 years, it kept her miserable and ritually unclean. This means she could not be amongst the people. Her issue kept her away from community. Anyone ever had an issue that kept you away from community? I'm talking about you. She followed Jesus until she could reach him. And she touched the fringe of his robe. Some people always like, well, why did she touch his feet? Why did she touch... His robe was his authority. At the bottom of his robe, uh, it was very famous back then, that's how they would sign papers. They would like pick up their robe and they would like imprint it in ink or whatever. And it like it spoke to his authority. She went through a crowd. She should not have even been in Lizzie. And she pressed through the crowd and she touched the hem of his garment. And when she did this, he stopped and said, Whoa, someone's touched me. If love is a foundation of an eternity mindset, then we have to love like Jesus. And what we find Jesus doing in this moment is not being moved by crowds. What we find Jesus in this moment is being steady, interruptible, and at peace. And the first thing you have to do to love like Jesus, the first thing you have to do when you're focused on eternity and living out your life with a kingdom mindset is you got to be steady. Because there's crowds everywhere. Crowds will tell you every single thing. You Look, if you don't know who you are when you walk into a room, you know what? The room will tell you who you are. And everybody wants to tell you you're a victim. And everybody wants to tell you you don't have enough followers on Instagram. Everyone wants to tell you everything about you. That maybe the years that you spent and now you're divorced and now you're dealing with all your things and then your kids are acting crazy. And that's what your identity is wrapped in. Jesus was so steady in who he was that he was surrounded by a crowd. And this was the pace he moved. Yet we run ourselves ragged at the pace of the world. And you know what we miss? People that are reaching out for Jesus. But his love was steady. So steady, she caught up. (laughs) Peter's done behind. When Jesus is like, whoa, someone touched me. Like I felt, he says, I feel power like left me. You know what the kind of faith you have to have? That when you reach out to God, that if he feels it? That's what your worship reminded me of today.
she reached out to steady. How many of us are being moved by the crowd because we're so worried about today that we forget we have eternity in front of us? That we forget there is a tomorrow and that God is bigger, better, badder, and in charge. We would move at a different pace. We would be steady. You know what people don't want to be around? Chaos. I don't ever want to hold on to anyone that is more crazy than me. I don't. Like, you know how you, in your marriages, guys, you guys that are married, there's always that one crazy person? Self-aware. My husband is steady, unmovable, like Jesus. I'm, I'm Cuban, so I blame everything on that. And um, one time I said that out loud and I felt the Holy Spirit say, no, you're a daughter of the living God. And so in the moments where I forget to focus on eternity and moments where I let my culture and society try to unsteady me in the crowd, I remember that Jesus was so steady that a miracle happened. Let's move forward. So she followed Jesus until she could reach him. She touched the fringe of his robe that Jesus wore, and at that moment, the bleeding stopped. Jesus, stopping and looking about, said, who touched me? And some genius in the crowd said, not me. Another in the crowd, it wasn't me either. Was it me, Jesus? Okay, and then Peter You know, because Peter, master, what kind of question is that with this huge crowd all around you and many people touching you at all sides? And Jesus said, I felt something. I felt power come out from me. I know that someone touched me. Love that is focused on eternity is always interruptible. Some of y'all need to pick up the phone for that crazy friend that keeps calling you. You need to have time for people. But you can't have time for people if you're walking around Canal Street, loving people, and not the way Jesus loved them. Chadi, what do you mean? (sighs) Loving people like Jesus means getting in the messy. It means getting in the trench with people, Tim. You know what I'm saying? It means that it's okay to get a little messy. It's okay to not be in a hurry. It's okay for you to interrupt my day because at any point, God is in control of my day. There is nothing that I am ever doing that I am too busy for people. I'm in the people business. Jesus was in the people business. Yesterday we were um, at the conference and um, I was selling books and there was a very long line, very long line, not because I'm cool, but I don't know. And so there's there's a line of books and I remember being a kid in ministry and I was hosting um, a a very well-known author and it was late. And there was a lot of people. And I was like, (laughs) ma'am, wrap it up. You know what I mean? Like, we're good. These people don't need you. Let's go. It's now 12 o'clock. And she looked at me dead in my eyeballs. And she said, ministry is not this. Ministry is this. Don't miss it. And so yesterday, I was tired. Not going to lie. I'm on a third leg of a trip. I still haven't been home. I haven't seen my pillow or my husband. And I looked at Kaylee and I said, we're going to stay right here. Not because I'm like super Christian. I'm not. (laughs) I have road rage. I live in Florida. Okay. (laughs) Oh my God. You have no idea. Because ministry is a people thing. So Jesus stopped. He said, we're going to stop right here, Peter. You're doing that talking thing again. You can stop talking now. And so he stopped, and he was steady. It goes on, it says, the woman now realized her secret was out. You know, it's funny, when you get interruptible, and you're loving people, like really loving people, they get like scared to tell you about themselves. But real love that's steady, real love that's interruptible, is functioning from a place of peace. Jesus was the Prince of Peace, is the Prince of Peace. Love that's focused on eternity is always at peace. And this woman realized who she touched. She was shaking with fear and she fell down in front of Jesus and she told her story in front of everyone and why she touched him and what happened. And he said, your faith has made you well, daughter. Go in peace. 
Peace is not a feeling. Peace is the person of Jesus Christ. Some of us are not functioning from a place of peace because we don't really know what peace is. The word peace in the Hebrew is shalom, wholeness, completeness, soundness of mind. It is the feeling of peace, but it is so much more. And if you want to have an eternity mindset, if you want to be generous, if you want to serve your church in the way that you, I I know this church serves, because I have been on the receiving end of your serving, and let me tell you, you guys might be small, but you are mighty. There is nothing small. You know, you, know, you know what this church reminds me of? Remember that story in the Bible? I think it was Gideon, right? Skinny Gideon. And he was like, had a whole army. He's like, how am I doing? And it was like only 300 men. And then it was like God had windled them down. But they were gangster and they were awesome. And they went in the spirit of God. That's this church. Like, that's who you are. I've been screaming at the women of this church for 24 hours about you're in the valley. Act as such. Like, fruit only grows in the valley. All your church is in the valley. Like, dude, that's dope. David killed Goliath in a valley. Like, think of all the stuff that's happened in the valley. I would have shirts. (laughs) Try me. I'm in a valley. You know what I mean? Like, you're killing it. You don't want this smoke. I'm in the valley. I'm a valley person. Like, I would be running around this place. Like, lock it up. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is so dope. That's who you are. You are a church that loves and is steady and interruptible and at peace. Come on, you can do better than that. But what this looks like in a practical sense is love that is not on Canal Street. Let me tell you a story. I don't want to end up on Dateline NBC. It's like my worst nightmare. Thank you for smiling as I look at you. He's not smiling. Anyways. <laughs> I know, but I'm blind. Leave me alone. Okay, so what ha- happened was, is during COVID, I got the brilliant idea to go spend Thanksgiving with my cousin, who's like my little brother. Okay, my husband was his best man, and they moved to California. They work at a little church called Bethel. And um, so they were at Bethel, and they were alone for their first Thanksgiving. And I said, not on my watch. Not on my watch. We're packing it up. I packed my sister's family up. I packed us up. In the middle of COVID, I went to California. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, okay. So I'm from Florida, the wild, wild west. So we get there, and we're in Northern California. It's beautiful. There's like a mountains and like outside. It's amazing. I don't go outside. This does not have cardio, okay? It's not that I don't want to, but I have asthma. It's weird. I like allergies. Like I'm allergic to everything. It's like, it's a problem. Like I'm never going to be like, you know what I want to do? A hike. No, I don't. You know what's out there? Bears. Like, I have no desire at any point to ever be like, let's go hiking. But my 13-year-old niece, Sela Vida, loves an Instagram story. She loves a moment. And so my dumb behind thought it the right thing would do would be to give her that Instagram moment. And I Googled things to do in Northern California. And I found this cave. Shh, it's gonna be amazing, watch. It was a cave, and in this cave, it's like, it's like the most beautiful, it's like all these Instagram pictures of these people that are just like, doosh, doosh, doosh. And, the, and I'm, like, I'm like, this is it. I'm gonna be the best tia in the world. I'm going to make a memory because I love her. I love her so much. She's gonna remember that I love her, right? Because we do things when we love people. I made Kaylee watch Lord of the Rings. She's watched them all. Doesn't mean she likes them. (laughs) And I've watched all her Disney movies. I'm 41. Um, And my husband's like, why are we watching this? Anyways, it's not the point. Point is, we get there. Now your girl had COVID pretty bad. Because again, no cardio. And so I'm on a special inhaler and I'm on breathing treatments and there's a hike. So we get there, and I'm like, that's fine, I have my emergency inhaler, no big deal. And we get there, and I'm like, that seems real far. Why are all these people walking? And they're like, oh, it's like a mile and a half down to the lake. I'm like, there's a lake? 
where's the cave? Oh, the cave is up the mountain. You have to go over the lake and up to the mountain. And then you get in the bus and the bus takes you up the mountain. I'm like, what? So now I'm panicking. Now I'm like sweating. And Sayla's like, Dia, this is, oh, Dia, thank you so much. And I'm like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's fine. We're fine. The whole family's here, okay? Also, I dress like a New Yorker at all times. I am not dressed appropriately for this. I'm in all black like Johnny Cash and a pair of boots that I should not be wearing. Nothing about my outfit says I am ready to hike, and but we go. And so as we're walking down, they're taking pictures. It's amazing. Like if you saw these pictures, they are amazing. I'm in a very long pea coat. And what I notice is everyone walking up the mountain looks like they want to die. It's 30 degrees, and I'm like, why are these people have no coats on? And I'm like, my sister, Gabby, I'm like, Gabby, do you see this? She's like, you're ridiculous, it's fine. And I'm like, no, something's afoot. Like, don't do this. <laughs> and so we get down the mountain. I'm already like, I hate this. I hate everything, pull yourself together. Okay, Chadi, pull yourself together. We get on the lake, most beautiful thing. Up, it's a, I, to this day, I've been to beautiful places, okay? Never have seen anything like this. It's like, a, it's like a movie. And I'm like, oh, peace that surpasses all understanding. I feel you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for being here. This moment's amazing. Lord, you, I'm praying. I'm like, this is the day that the Lord has made. <sighs> Look at Selah. Look at her. Look at her little face. She's so happy. And she's looking at me. She's like, Thea. I'm like, yo, I know. You're going to remember this moment. Your eyebrows are fantastic. And so I'm like, let's keep going. But when we got to the other side, hmm. It was like a 1970s murder bus with a guy probably drinking whiskey, driving it, pulls up. And the thing goes, Rrr. have you guys ever seen Pee Wee Herman's Great Adventure? <laughs> Do you remember that lady who drived the truck? Google it. Anyways, that's, I swear, he starts pouring something into his coffee and I'm like, it's not good whiskey. It's bad whiskey. That means this guy's been drinking whiskey since 7 a.m. Like, it's bad. So then he starts to drive us up the mountain. And I'm like, whose idea was this? Mine. And so we get into the mountain. And at this point, I'm fine. I'm fine. Until they open the door of the cave. Guys, it hadn't hit me yet that I was about to walk into a cave. Like, I was just like, where are the pictures? I just want to take the pictures real quick and come back out. <laughs> it's a dark, dark tunnel of sadness. And I look at my husband, and he goes, this was your idea. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm fine, I'm fine. I go to grab my inhaler. It's just like, you know, just to make sure. You know, you just want to hold it. I did not have it. It was in another jacket. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I'm like, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. <laughs> Have you guys ever put yourself in a situation? Has love ever put you in a situation where God is gone, I did not sign up for this? <laughs> Have you ever loved someone that you shouldn't have been loving? Have you ever given your heart away to someone that you shouldn't have given your heart away or to a job or success or to a dream? And then you're like, I can do all things to Christ that strengthens me. And he's like Taylor Swift. That's like, I would like to be removed from this narrative. <laughs> I do this a lot. I love on Canal Street. But I love Selah. So I did it. I get in the cave. Whew. I'm fine. We're fine. We're fine. Uh, it's like the lady's like, hey, don't touch anything. It's hundreds of thousands of years old. And my husband starts touching things. Because <laughs> he's the guy that's going to touch everything because he paid to be there. And he's like, babe, babe, look at this. I'm like, stop touching it. So, so then I'm panicked. Then I'm like, we're going to get in trouble. I'm 40 years old. We're going to get in trouble. Please stop. Stop what you're doing. So now I'm in a cave. I'm in a pea coat. I'm sweating. I'm like uncomfortable. And then we get to the second cavern. And she's like, here in Devil's Cavern. And it hit me. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Love has got me into this cave and now I can't get out. I'm stuck. And, and then the panic man. <sighs> oh my God, I don't have my inhaler. You're fine, you're fine, you're fine. You're gonna be fine. Oh my God. What's this called, Devil's Cave? Okay, all right, okay. Ma'am, where are the windows? I asked the lady, where are your windows? She said, are you okay? 
And I said, we're okay. Are we okay? <laughs> Are we okay? First of all, if there was a window, was I jumping out of it? What were we doing? I'm in the mountains, up a mountain. I am up a mountain in a cave. Isn't it funny how when we don't love the way Jesus does, we're jumping out windows that don't exist? Isn't it funny that we're looking for ways out that are not good ways out when we're not? This woman, there was only one way out, and it was Jesus. If you want to have an eternity mindset, you have to legitimately go through it and touch his hem. And so we find Chadi in a cave again. And then I, I, oh God, I um, turn into Will Fer Ferrell from Talladega Nights and I start stripping <laughs> because now I'm sweating and I can't breathe. So I'm like, jacket off, hoodie off. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine, I'm hot. I'm hot, it's fine. And then my sister, who's also incredibly claustrophobic, looks at me and picks up my panic. And she's like, wait, what? We're, we're here, what are we doing? Whose idea was this? She grabs my hand and she goes, it's okay, I'm here with you. I'm here. I'm here with you. And my husband at this point has lost it. He is laughing hysterically. He is like, he's like, I've been through this before. She doesn't care that you're here. This is going to be fun. And so she now has picked up my panic. And what started out as love has now turned into panic and in trying to get out. And I scream at her, I don't care that you're here. Because isn't it funny that when we put ourselves in situations and we're not chasing Jesus and we're not moving towards him for our miracle, that we don't even care that the people that love us the most are in the room. And we're back. So then Chadi is panicked. And Chadi now has her sister panicking. And now Selah sees. And she looks at us and goes, I'm going to get you out of here. What you don't know is that my... 13-year-old niece, now 14, is my height. She is a star athlete. She is a volleyball. She will one day play in the Olympics. Like, she's that good. She goes and works out for fun. She's a weirdo. She's just like, she called me the other day because she wants me to drive four and a half hours to take her pictures for her quinceanera. I'm like, what? Why are you at a quinceanera? How old are you? You're a baby. I held you in my arms. Like, and she looks at us and goes, I'm going to get you out. And girl, did she not. She went through that. We were running, running out the cave. So now Sayla's Instagram moment has turned into saving us. <laughs> and so the door flings open. And there it is, the stairs from the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> you know the Mordor stairs that Gollum takes him up? Where there's, it's like, why are we doing this? There's a spider somewhere around? That's the stairs that we opened up to. Because when love takes you through things you shouldn't be walking through, the way out's going to be a lot harder. If I, if I would have just paused... If I would have just went to the one I love and said, killer, what do you want to do? I'll do anything except for go in a cave. <laughs> she didn't want to go in the cave, to be quite honest with you. She just did it because she thought I wanted to do it, which was dumb. I then traversed down this mountain of death from the devil's cave. Got back in the bus with the guy drinking whiskey, who is now on his fourth pack of cigarettes. It wasn't even that long, man. How'd you go through four? <laughs> and scene. Okay, here we go. So we get to the bottom of the lake, and let me tell you, that trek back was not magical, because my asthma is now kicked in, and I can't breathe. It's probably the worst asthma attack I've ever had in my life. And now i got to walk a half a mile up a mountain. And I wasn't prepared. I didn't have my inhaler. Some of us are chasing love. And we don't have the breath of life with us. Some of us are chasing love. And instead of grabbing on to the authority that God has given you because you said yes to follow him, you're trying to do it on your own. You're trying to do it on your own. I got home. I did a breathing treatment. I was fine. But if you want to build a legacy of love, if you want to live a life that is generous, if you want to live a life that's continuing to build the kingdom, and not buildings, but people, 
Because that's what the church is. So you have this epic campaign. It's not about the building. I've met your pastors. It's about the people. It's about the people in the valley that we're trying to touch, that we're trying to love, that we're trying to impact. Our church is actually the only hurricane shelter in our city because everything in our city is surrounded by water. So when this hurricane hit a few weeks ago, I had to evacuate, but the church was there. And our care pastor and our team stayed when we had to evacuate and cared for the people of our city. It was a refuge for our city. The church is a refuge for your cities. And if fruit only grows in the valley, you know what helps fruit grow? Manure, toiling, work, serving, and love. The type of love that will go into a cave. But with their breathing right. (laughs) And so I'll say this, I'll end with this. I know that in every room, whether they're watching online or whether they're in the room, there are people in this room that maybe haven't experienced love. The only love you've ever really truly experienced is on Canal Street. But I'm here to tell you that love is patient and love is kind. Love is interruptible. Love is steady. And love is functioning from a place of peace and moving at a pace of peace that if you reached out today, he would stop. Some of you, it might just be sitting in your chair today and saying, yes, Jesus, I will follow you. Yes, Jesus. And it's not a matter of coming up. It's not a matter of the preacher lady praying for you. It's a matter of you right there where you're sitting going, yes, Jesus. Yeah, God, I'll follow you. I'll follow you. Even I'll follow you anywhere. And if it's messy, that's okay. And there's other people in this room that are sitting in this room, and there's always one or two that you're chasing a love that is not Jesus. And some of you might need to turn around and go the other way. And when you do, guess what? He'll find you there. He always stops. He's always ready. And he's always listening. So I just want to pray for you. Can I do that? So I did this yesterday. I just kind of had everybody open their hands, like ready for something to be dropped in their hands. And I just want to pray for you. For just It's just an added, a posture of God. Whatever you want to do, do it. I know the team's going to sing a little bit after. And I just want you to sit in that position. I'm going to pray for you, but I just want you to sit there and just say, God, whatever it is, whatever love I'm chasing, if it's on Canal Street, turn me around. Turn me towards you. Turn, turn, me, turn, turn me towards the love that stops towards the love that's interruptible, to the love that is full of peace, functioning from a place of peace. Lord, I want to be that kind of love, not the love that goes into caves and then strips away everything that you've done. So Lord, we just, we just sit here for a moment. We say, do, Lord, do your worst. <laughs> Lord, whatever storm looks like, whatever it looks like, God, just do what you need to do. It might be messy, God. It might be boundaries, God. Lord, let your Holy Spirit show us individually, God, what you need from us because we need your love. We can't be love or show love or express love or be the church without you. So, Lord, drop into our hands your love, the love that is patient, the love that is kind the love that is full of compassion, the love that's full of self-control and goodness and gentleness and joy. Let us be those people, Lord, a people of love. So, Father, I just bless them right now. May the Lord bless them, Lord, that we would just bless their going and their coming, that your presence would overwhelm them in their homes. And for those that are sitting here, Lord God, that didn't get it, Give it to them in the car. Uh, Lord, give it to them on the way home. Maybe in a dream, wake them up in the middle of the night. Lord, because you always stop. Lord, you always consider us. Because you're such a good dad. You're such a good friend. You're such a good God. In Jesus' mighty name I pray.